The days of the sailing ship are nearly over. Yet here in the Swedish port of Karlsham lies a veteran of the sailing world, a foremasted bark preparing for... With all those masts and yards and the wind in her sails, she can circle the world. Without the wind, she's helpless. The tug takes her in tow and out of harbour. She sets sail and the land drops out of sight astern. Across the North Sea and round the north of the British Isles. Then out into the fresh, cold, westerly winds of the North Atlantic. The captain and the mate take some sights. They work them out and plot the ship's position on the chart. Latitude 45 degrees 26 minutes north, longitude 25 degrees 37 minutes west. And that's just here in the North Atlantic. She's come from Karlsham in Sweden and she's bound for Cape Town at the southernmost tip of Africa. And this is roughly the route she'll travel. She's got to cross the equator and the tropics of Cancer and Capricorn. And she's a sailing ship entirely dependent on the wind. So she'll have to make the best use she can of the westerlies in the North Atlantic, the Northeast trade, the southeast trade and the roaring forties between these wind belts lie the horse latitudes and the doldrums and in these regions there may be only chance uncertain breezes or no wind at all But here in the North Atlantic, she has the strong westerlies to carry her forward. With every sail set and drawing, the ship heads south at 200 miles a day. The ocean star is sighted not far from the Azores. She is on a route taken by machine-driven vessels. Everybody crowds on deck to have a look at her, but the sailing ship, being dependent on the winds, does not often meet shipping that follows the shorter route. On about 40 degrees north, the westerlies are left behind, and the ship sails into the horse latitudes. Here, the winds are uncertain. The sails must be trimmed to take advantage of every chance breeze. And then, on about 30 degrees north, the ship comes into the northeast trade wind. This good, steady wind makes for easy sailing. The weather is likely to remain fine, and now is the time to change sail. Down come the storm sails, which have carried the ship through the first part of the journey. And in their place goes a lighter suit of sails that are better for fair weather sailing.
A capstan is used to hold the sails aloft, and they're made fast by the men out on the yard. ship runs easily before the northeast trades and there's time to see to repairs. The donkeyman, he's really the ship's blacksmith, is often hard at work on the foredeck with his hand forged. And there's a lot of spicing to be done, repairing gear that's carried away a lot. The sailmaker patches some of the storm sails that have been torn and cuts out long strips of canvas known as cloth, all ready for sewing into new sails. As she nears the equator, the ship leaves the northeast trades and comes into the doldrums. The wind drops and the ship lies becalmed. It's stickily hot and more comfortable sleeping on deck than below. Without wind, the sailing ship is helpless. Another day, another night, and still no progress. No one can tell how long this is going to last. Here she lies, just south of the equator, in the doldrums. Here is the equatorial current, which is dragging her west nor west. But in this region, sudden squalls are frequent. These tropical squalls are preceded by an oppressive stillness. Cumulonimbus clouds herald the approach of such a squall. Yet the air above the ship remains hot and motionless until the wind tears into the rigging with sudden fury. This is a good luck squall, but it drives the ship into the southeast trade. No need to work ship now. Except for the man at the wheel, she sails herself. In these waters live flying fish that skim just above the surface. But the fisherman is angling for bonitos. This bonito thought he had a flying fish, but he swallowed the fisherman's hook instead. South Trinidad Island can be seen in the distance as the ship leaves the steady trade winds and continues south into the uncertain weather of the horse latitude. This island is high and barren and uninhabited, a sandy grey mountain all by itself on the edge of the tropics. And down here in the South Atlantic, the ship usually has one or more albatrosses in tow. They follow her for days, sometimes weeks. Albatrosses, except when they're nesting, always keep well out to sea. They're big birds, too, with a wingspan of up to 14 feet. The ship makes her way through the horse latitudes as best she can, heading southeast. Until on about 40 degrees south, she comes into the roaring forties with a strong prevailing west wind to carry her on the last stage of her journey. She runs east before the wind, making good speed, until it begins to blow up and she has to shorten sail. This is no brief tropical squall, but a full-blooded storm in the Southern Ocean that may last for days.
As the wind drops, the full damage can be seen. Torn sails and broken gear. So all hands turn to and make good the damage. And then out comes the sun with a fair wind and the ship points up northeast towards Africa. The roaring forties are left behind. Eighty days at sea and the land is very near. From Karlsham in 56 degrees north, east trade. Through the Doldrum. Through the southeast trade. And through the roaring forties. And at last she has made a landfall. There's a cloud over Table Mountain as the tugs come out to take the ship into...